You know, I, I have to tell you, I live in a part of the country where uh, my neighborhood is 95% Wall Street. Um, wow, there are empty houses around me. And I keep hearing from my neighbors, you know, we're just about to hit the bottom on the real estate. And they just keep saying, uh-huh. Mm -mm. If you think we've hit bottom, bottom, you haven't seen the latest forecast for mortgage defaults in this country. It is not a pretty picture. Here to explain is uh, Robert Prechter. He is the author of Conquer the Crash. He predicted the 1987 stock market crash. And David Buckner, professor of organizational leadership at Columbia University. David, I want you to explain this chart. Can we put this chart up on the screen and tell me what this means? What you're looking at there is you're looking at 2010. <clears throat> you're seeing a peak in defaults. Look at the spikes. You have two spikes there. You're seeing a peak in defaults for homes that were, more, that were financed in 2004, 2005, 2006 because their adjustable rates are resetting. <clears throat> but what you're not seeing, and most people are saying is the markets are getting better, they're not looking out there to 2012. Look at 11 and 12 and you're seeing another peak. Those blue points on the top are more defaults. Which means, wait, 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 which means people just can't pay their they mortgage. They can't pay their mortgage. Okay. And these aren't subprime people now. Right. This, if, if you look at the very beginning, we're at the very beginning of the chart where it's almost where we are. Correct. That's where we've passed. And all of that blue stuff down at the bottom, those were subprime. Those were subprime. Subprime. The and these, the blue at the top is Alt-A, which means they're kind of risky. That's correct. But, but you're actually looking at an increase as you go, a reduction of subprimes. They're no longer the ones in default, but an increase in those that are viable buyers of homes, right. they're, going to have to, they're going to be defaulting. Right. So that what, that mean, what that tells you is... You're going to have more neighbors. Got the, right. We got rid of the people who were on the edge, yep. but in 2010, 2011, we're going to start hitting the people who are, are, are traditionally pretty safe. For the next two to three years, you're going to see that five-year window okay. where it started in August of 07. You're going to go to August of 2012. Okay. You're going to see crashes. All right. Um, let me, uh, uh, Robert, let me ask you, um, well, first, wait, wait, wait. David, let me, put, the, put the thing back up on the screen for me again. Will you? David, when it goes back down, that means there's nobody defaulting there at 2012. Yeah, but there's no loans. There's no loans going out. Right. And that's because there's nobody making loans now. There's nobody making loans. So okay. that's our domino effect. Okay. All right. Now let me go to Robert. Robert, um, how significant, what is coming our way? How significant is this? Well, extremes beget extremes, and what happened in the mid-2000s was something we had never seen before. There's been a very steady buildup in debt for 70 years, ever since the Depression lows of 1933. And when we went off the gold standard and we had debt-based money, it was a very easy thing to do. It really accelerated in the 1980s and 90s, but it was those mid-2000 years that just were unprecedented. Bankers found people to lend to who were literally flat broke. They had no money even to pay the closing costs. Well, how do you lend to a person like that? You give them a 110% loan. And some uh, unfortunate buyer, or I might say foolish buyer, was out there willing to be the creditor on this particular All package. Right. So Other people said, well, I can't afford these uh, payments. So they said, well, tell you what, we'll make them low to start and big later. And that's the chart okay. you're showing. So are, are you predicting, you said the crash of 87. Are you predicting a crash? This, because I think this no. is, go ahead. What we're in is a very, very uh, large degree bear market. I think we peaked out a great wave of optimism in 1999-2000. We've been essentially in the early stages of a great bear market ever since. Very much like the 1920s high or, or 1835, it led to several decades of malaise, difficulty, uh, and even social unrest. I think that's the ultimate uh, direction that we're going here. But the, but the basis of it all, which I think you're showing these charts, is, is IOUs, credit, and the other side, which okay. is debt. That's what's weighing financially right. on the country. Robert, thank you, David. There, there's something more to this, though. If you go back and you look at 2004, that is when Congress was pushing right. the lenders to get homes into the hands of people who couldn't afford it. We're hitting that five-year. It went from 2003 to 2008. That's when you started to see the beginning of that chart mm -hmm. where the, the reset started right. to occur. We got another three years in this. Okay, so, so you're dealing you, with. Are it. you predicting? Because I can't figure out. They've used all of the bullets in the gun. The Treasury has put all the money. If this continues to fall down more and has a second, we have a false uh, top and then it comes down and crashes down in 2010 or 11. There's no more bullets in the gun for the Treasury. We, we have nothing else to put. That 2004 2005 bullet and then the Treasury, we have nothing else to shoot at it right now. Okay, good. Oh, there you go. Let's have fish.